a no, uh, is this debatable? Yes. Oh, it is. So it, <laughs> I've gone lost. <laughs> Honourable David Parker. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amongst the supplementary order papers that are on the table uh, in respect of the title of this bill is a late proposal by the government to change the name of the underlying legislation from injury prevention rehabilitation and compensation to the ACC bill to the ACC bill as a consequence uh, and I, I want to explore that I think we need to have a look, look, look a bit historically as to why the name came to be as it is. Following the passage of the original accident compensation law in New Zealand, in my mind there's not much doubt that if you look historically, New Zealand took off its eye off the ball when it came to injury prevention. Prior to ACC, of course, there was a fiscal cost to employers through the risk of court action uh, as a consequence of injured workers suing them that meant that they did keep a good eye on injury prevention. And after the ACC legislation came in, there was a period when New Zealand's accident rate in the workplace didn't follow the same trend as was the case in overseas jurisdictions. And for that reason, governments of the day, including the Labour government, decided that there was a need to have some more interventions to make sure that we did what I think everyone in this parliament would uh, we achieve what I think everyone in this parliament would want to achieve, which is actually lower accident rates. One of the things that was done was that uh, more focus was put on enforcement of appropriate workplace safety through uh, the Department of Labour, uh, using their regulatory function to ensure that there were better work safe practices so as to reduce accidents. But one of the other things that was done was it was a change of focus within the Accident Compensation Corporation to have a greater focus on injury prevention. And it's worked. It's worked. The, those combination of efforts have meant that rather than the trend in New Zealand workplaces going in the wrong direction, i.e. separating from the international trend where New Zealand workplaces weren't improving in their safety at the same rate as was being achieved in other places, including Australia, following the changes that the last Labor government did, both in terms of more regulatory action via the Department of Labor and more focus within ACC on injury prevention, we actually had improved outcomes and less injury prevention. And I want to give an example of where the government is now reversing that. And I think this is a shocking example. It relates to a, a program that was developed at the University of Otago Medical School and has now been rolled out through most parts of New Zealand. And it's falls prevention for the elderly. We know that, uh, and we've heard from the Minister acknowledging in this House just in the last few days that actually more than the work account, it's actually the non-earner account that has costs that are increasing, largely as a consequence of the elderly growing older, and a lot of those elderly falling over in their homes and breaking a hip. And that then has additional, has ad, has additional medical costs and uh, home, home care costs. Now, Sandra Kerr derides that, but actually um, at financial reviews recently, it has actually been acknowledged by ACC that one of the great problem areas is actually the growth of falls of the elderly in their home. Now, there's a program by the medical school that is directly targeted at the most at-risk group, which are people who are over 80 years old, who have already had a fall and have been identified by their, their uh, doctor as needing an intervention. It is an inexpensive intervention, and unlike most of these programs, it's had extensive peer review study by scientists as to its efficacy. That has led no. to articles praising this, uh, articles in the British Medical Journal, British Medical Journal no less, highlighting this as an example of injury prevention work that is cost effective. Indeed, the cost-benefit analysis shows that for every dollar spent, there is two dollars saved in the health system in the year following. Two dollars saved for every one dollar spent. And yet this government has cut funding saying it can't be afforded. It is nonsense economics. It will see the cost of ACC going up. And that's one of the reasons why they want to go back to talking about 
this being the ACC Act, rather than the Injury Prevention, Rehabilitation and Compensation Amendment Bill, because the reality is that we are now heading back to the time in New Zealand when there was insufficient attention paid to in injury prevention, and as a consequence, New Zealand will go back to as it was under the last national government, and the trends in respect of injury prevention will be bad. Therefore, the trends in respect of growing numbers of injury and growing costs of injury will remain, and, and as a consequence, costs will go up rather than down. Chair, chair. Uh, 